Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Good luck on your exams this week. Just please give a like and a subscribe so we can keep the channel growing. Thank you. Now that we've done the most basic query in both designed view and wizard view, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do other queries, multi table queries using only the de design option. We won't be using wizard anymore because it's not that useful when we branch out beyond doing simple queries. So the first query I'm going to do is, as you can see here, query with an ascending order or query with descending order. I might do both of these in one go just to show how this works. So let's go to my database. So I'm going to do ascending order and descending order as said at the same time. So I'm going to be using the customer table, which I have. And the columns I'm going to need for this are first name, last name, and customer ID, or forename and surname. I think that's what I've called it. Now in the sort, I'm going to have it as ascending. Then let's click run. So let's go to my database. And if I go to create at the top there, I'm going to go to query design. So it comes up with this option here. I'm going to go to my right and I'm going to click on where it says tables. As you can see, it's on queries now. I can click on all. I can click on links and I can click on tables. I'm going to need tables for this. And I know I'm going to use my table called customer. I think I said customer ID, uh, forename and surname right typically people do surname last because that's more unique than forename but it doesn't really matter which one comes first in this case now under sort i'm going to make sure that for sort i go over to surname people typically sort the surname first i'm going to sort this as ascending means it goes from the lowest to the largest so a to z not z to a or z to a now this is actually finished all i need to do now is click on run and that gives me my query. So the first person on my list is Bob the Builder, Son Gohan, Son Goku, Tom and Jerry, Mr. Piccolo, Saiyan Reddit, SpongeBob, Square or SquarePants, SpongeBob, I guess. So four name first. This is, uh, no, sorry. I believe this is the one that goes up in order and not this, okay? So next, I'm going to simply edit this one. So uh, you know what? Let me save this one and just do another one quickly. So query uh, ascending. And then I'm going to do query descending now. As you can see, once I save that, it came up with the query ascending on the left-hand side here. I'm going to go back to create. I'm going to go to query design. I'm going to add the same ones again. Oh, no, not that one. Let me delete that. So that was a general mistake. I just assumed it was on tables, but as you can see, it's on queries again for some reason. I'm going to click on this here. When it's highlighted with that yellow box around it for older versions, I believe it's is a light blue. But in any case, highlight it by clicking or dragging your mouse over it. Clicking delete on your keyboard. Go back to tables. I'm going to do customer again. Let's do the same ones. So customer ID, uh, first name, surname. And this time I'm going to sort the, the first name or the forename, I believe, as descending. So that's the opposite, right? So simply click where it says sort descending not ascending descending but under forename i'm going to leave it exactly like that i don't want any criteria anywhere that's all i need when i click on run again top left hand corner run next to view is going to give me my results so forename should now be descending so the um t is the last thing here and as you can see b for bob the builder is the first thing so it goes in the opposite direction I'm going to right click on this and I can click save here or I can go to file here and click save or I can press control on my keyboard, hold it down and press S for Sierra. This comes up. Once this comes up, I can type QRY, what was this? Uh, descending, I think. Yeah, query descending. Click OK. And as you can see, it's popped up over here. So I've got my ascending and descending. That's how you do a basic ascending and descending query. I'm going to close this, close this, and the next one I'm going to do is doing a multi-table query. So it pulls data from two tables. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is do queries with specific names. So let's go down. We're going to go to create, go to query design and add the customer table. And we're going to do for a oh, custom ID, forename and surname, but I'm only going to get specific forenames and specific surnames from my database. How do I do that? Let's go to the database. Let's go to create. Let's go to query design. And again, make sure you're on tables on this side here. You could go to all or you can go to tables. I'm going to go to tables. Choose customer. 
I'm going to choose customer ID, for name, and surname. And I believe it makes more sense for me to do criteria on the for name. I believe I have a few names beginning with the same thing. So Son Goku, Son Gohan, whatever the case is, right? Um, I think I have to do equal here. That's it. And I might as well do this in, let's say, ascending order, right? So again, here is everything I need, my customer ID, my forename, I've put the criteria as S-O-N, surname, I've put that as ascending order, then I'm just going to click run, and there we go, we have our two things from our database, and that's it. So here I'm going to be using two tables now, I'm actually going to do this one now. I'm going to use a database which was given to me, I believe this was purchased from one of those websites, and it has some worked examples. I'm not allowed to share it, but in any case, I'm going to do two tables. I'm going to choose a speciality table and a staff table. I'm going to grab surname and speciality. Now, the relationship has already been created. So when I pull from both these tables, it should pull in the information I need from both of them that are linked. It shouldn't pull in anything random, all right? So again, speciality and staff. So let me go back to my database. Let me go to create query design. Uh, what did I say? Speciality and staff. Um, I think I said speciality here. Oh, one second, my computer's frozen. Okay, speciality here. And let me grab surname on this side. And let's do surname in, I don't know, ascending order, right? So as you can see here, my relationship is present when I pull my two tables in. And down here, it doesn't show anything special. But once I click run, I get my information from both of them. Okay, so nurse is Johnson, GP is Jones, GP is Smith as well. And that's it. That's how you do a multi-table query. Now, you had to have done your relationships in part one, in activity one. Activity one was creating the tables and doing your normalization, doing your relationships. If that has not been done, this type of query should not work. Next, I'm going to do a three-table query. Why? Just because. I've done two, I'll do three, and I'll do four. We need patient, appointment, and speciality from my database. So let's go back to access. Let's go to create, query design, patient, appointments, and speciality, I believe it was. Now, again, next, all I need to do is to add the stuff I want in my database. I don't actually remember what I need, so let me just add some stuff at random. So patient ID seems like something that's sensible. Surname, maybe appointment ID. Um, appointment date might be good and special speciality so the person I'm going to see that's your speciality let me do surname in ascending oh not descending ascending order appointment ID let's just leave everything else the same very very basic query I'm just going to pull this information in and see what it looks like so when I click run there we go this is everything we have so patient ID here the surname of the patient, the appointment uh, appointment ID, appointment date, and the speciality, so the person who's going to see them. Now again, right-click, save, query, um, all patient uh, appointment info, let's say. Click OK. It saves it on the left-hand side here, and that's it. I'm done. Here we have a four-table query being set up. And from here, I'm going to pull in all four tables and just pick some information at random. Now, please, please, please read your exam paper properly. It will tell you what is necessary. I'm not going by any specific exam paper. I'm simply trying to show how to do each thing that might pop up on any exam paper. That's why I've switched databases. But I have seen some channels on YouTube which actually have really good part A walkthroughs. So I'll try and post a few of those videos in my description. Definitely have a watch of that as well. Go back to my database, go back to create, query design, tables already highlighted. So one, two, three, four, all four of them there. Let's move this one down here, I guess. It's a bit messy, but that's all right. Here we go. That's a bit neater. All right, so here we have our tables. Now, let's pick some information at random. Appointment ID is always good. Then let's have, let's just have all the IDs here. Let's have uh, surname of the patient. Let's have uh, staff speciality. So we know who the person is going to see, a doctor or a nurse. And speciality ID as well. Why not, right? 
And from here, I'm not going to do any sorting. This is just pulling the data in from four different tables. And again, relationship had to have been set up previously or this should not, or this won't work. When I click run, it just pulls in some random information. Nothing special here. And again, file, save, query. Honestly, I don't even know what this was about, but you should name yours something sensible. Random, let's just say random data. If you've been asked to pull in information about patients and their appointment date and times, you could maybe call it query appointment date and time. Whatever you deem fit, but it needs to be something relatively sensible, something that somewhat describes what is being done in that query. I've saved it. I'm going to close it and on to the next one. In this one, we're going to query nurses and a specific date. Now I'm going to pull in all four tables again, but I'm going to be choosing specific things from each table. So let's get the tables in first and then I can figure out what I need to pull in. Go back to my database, go to create, go to query design, pull in all four tables. Is that in order? Somewhat, right? And then let's see the information I need to bring in. Okay, so patient ID, surname, speciality. So patient ID, surname from the patient table. And then I'm going to need speciality from the speciality table. Then I'll need staff ID from staff table staff ID staff table and then I'll need appointment date from appointment table uh, appointment date I think that's pretty much everything under date now this database I've, I've, I was given only has two dates in there the 27th and the 28th of the 7th so in mine I just put the 28th 28th of the 7th 2020 so appointment date for criteria the 28th of the 7th I need to put my dashes in dash 2020 that should be fine. And under speciality, I'm going to put nurse. So speciality equals N-U-R-S-E. You don't have to put the equal sign. It seems to work fine without it, but I'm just so used to doing it in programming and so on. So after that, yep, that's everything. I simply click run. And there we have it. Only nurse, or so only sorry, only patient Harris, I guess, sees a nurse on this day at this time. And that's the staff ID of the person. So again, just pulling from multiple tables, this has become very repetitive, but queries um, are activity two or three, I believe, on the exam paper, and you do have to do quite a bit of them. So that's why I'm going through as many as I can. Next, we're going to calculate how many appointments a specific doctor has, I believe. So it's going to be a basic query again. I'm going to pull in from the staff table and the appointments table. And from the staff table, I'm going to need surname. From the appointments table, I'm going to need appointment type. So let's pull in staff and appointments first. So let's go to my database, go to create, query, design. I said staff and appointment. And from this, I'm going to get staff surname, I believe, and appointment, uh, what was it? Let's double check. This was appointment type. So appointment type and on the staff, well, before we do anything, we need to click on totals at the top. So where it says parameters, we click on totals and keep an eye down here where sort is. It's going to add an extra, what's that, column row? It's going to add an extra row. And under where it says appointment type, I'm going to simply click on the drop down list and I'm going to do where it says sum, S U M. On the surname where it says group by, I'm going to leave that exactly as it is. And under criteria, let's see which doctor I actually looked for. I said Dr. Smith. So this is a doctor I want to check for, right? So I'm going to say S-M-I-T-H. Again, you don't need the equal sign. Let me double check if I've done everything I needed to do. Yep, yep, that seems perfectly fine. My relationship is still there. No issues with that. I've put Smith here. I've put this as sum and I should be okay. Yep, so when I click run on my database here, here we go, Dr. Smith has two appointments, right? And that's it, it's worked out how many appointments this doctor has. So the next thing we're gonna to want to do, this is the last query I believe, is to calculate the cost. And to do that, I'm gonna need patient table and appointments table. Let's just break this down one at a time. Patient table, appointments table. So I'll go back to my database, go to create, go to query design, 
patient table and appointments table. All right, let me go back to my PowerPoint. I'm going to need the patient type and appointment type. Okay, so patient type and appointment type. Patient type here, appointment type here, and appointment type twice. That's why I put twice there. Now, the criteria we're going to need is actually private, but I just put NHS or private because you might have some other criteria that you might have to use for your new database. NHS is free, and I'm using the word free loosely because obviously it's still paid for by someone. Private is the one where you have to pay before you're seen. So let's go in and add what this says. So under my patient type, I'm going to set the criteria to private. So under patient type here, criteria equals P-R-I-V-A-T-E, -E, private. Under appointment type, I'm going to put the word sum, so S-U-M. Appointment type, I'm going to make sure I have some actually. So before I to, to, to get some again, I click on totals at the very top and it's going to come up with this thing here. Rather than having it say group by, we're going to have it say sum, S-U-M. And from there, on the last one, we're going to have expression. So again, click on the drop down menu here where it says group by and choose expression. The last thing we're going to want to do, let me go back to my PowerPoint, is actually change the name where it says appointment type. And each of my appointments is going to be, let me be expensive, 250 pounds, right? Here I have 100, I'm going to make it 250 instead. So I'm going to put paid, then I'm going to put sum, then open brackets. I'm going to try and zoom in on this when I'm editing. So at the beginning here, oh, let me click into that properly. I'm going to type PAID colon SUM. I'm going to put an open bracket. I'm going to put a square bracket here, and then I'm going to go all the way to the end. I'm going to put a square bracket to close the first one. So here's the finished product. I didn't want to keep typing it. I made a few mistakes, so I will zoom in as much as I can. But let me copy this. Let me paste this on my PowerPoint somewhere so you guys can see it very clearly. Uh, how do I add a text box? Here we go. Text box added. Oh, it's already there. So this is actually what is in there. Now this 100 has been changed to 250 because I'm saying each of my private appointments is going to cost 250 pounds. So if I have 10 of them, it's going to be 2,500 pounds. And I'm saying obviously that my um, appointment patient type must be private. My appointment type, I'm getting the sum from appointment type. And for this one, I'm saying the sum of the appointment type times 250. In this case, it was 100, but on my new database, I'm saying 250. Now, when I click run on this, should get some results. Here we go. I've got four private appointments. If I can change this. No, perfect. I've got four private appointments because it's counted how many appointments are on the private. And then it's multiplied that four by 250. Hopefully that was clear enough, but let me go back to design view one more time and try to explain it. So I've got my patient type here and I've set my patient type criteria to private. So it's only going to look for private patients throughout my database, right? Then I've also said, you know what? The appointment type, let's count all of those appointment types that are private patient um, types, right? Then under that, I'm going to say, well, let's then multiply however many patient, sorry, appointment types I have by 250. So if this were... In this case, I have four, four times 250, that's going to give me a thousand. And this needs to be expression because this data is coming from no specific table. It's just simply being calculated from a column in somewhere else. You leave this part blank. And once you click run, you get this value here. Now I'm going to go back and change this value. Let's make it 1000 pounds. So remove that 1000 pounds per thing, right? Per appointment. When I click run, this should be 4000. There we go. So as we can see, that updates whenever we change these values in here. And that's it. I don't think you need anything else for queries personally. Um, again, I'm going to share other videos on here which go through everything for part A and everything for part B as well.